low profile through the years, preferring to stay quietly but firmly supportive in the background. With unfailing support of my wife and partner, I have lived my life to the fullest. When Lee Kuan Yew wrote his memoirs, The Singapore Story, he dedicated it to Chu, calling her his tower of strength, one who gave him constant emotional and intellectual support. Singaporeans know only Kwa Geok Choo's public identity as the wife of Singapore's first and longest serving Prime Minister and mother to its third. But Kwa Geok Choo was also a woman in her own right, one who was ahead of her time, who married without her parents' knowledge and blessings while still an undergraduate in a foreign land. Kwa Geok Choo was one of eight children. Her father, Kwa Siu Ti, was a banker. An outstanding student at Methodist Girls' School, she topped the 1936 senior Cambridge examination for the whole of Malaya and Singapore. At Raffles Institution, she caught the attention of a young Lee Kuan Yew when she gave him unexpectedly stiff competition for a Queen's scholarship. But academic rivalry aside, he knew he had found his equal and his soulmate. Their relationship grew through the years of Japanese occupation when they met regularly at the home of Lee's schoolmate, Yong Yuk Lin, who was also Kwa Geok Choo's brother-in-law. The two men then had a gum-making cottage industry going on at Yong's home. By September 1944, love had blossomed. When World War II ended, Lee Kuan Yew left to study law in England in 1946. But he was miserable until Kwa Geok Choo joined him at Cambridge University a year later on a Queen's scholarship. She had missed a year but was to go on to complete a course in two years and got a first class honours in the end. The two married secretly on 23rd December 1947. She had just turned 27 and he was 24. You can't explain these things. <laughs> he had tremendous aplomb. Self-confidence. Uh, very jaunty. He was a handsome young man. <laughs> When they returned to Singapore in 1950, they tied the knot again, this time with their parents' full knowledge. Mr. Lee had often fondly called Mrs. Lee his partner, and that she was in every sense of the word. She had played a major role in the People's Action Party's campaign in the 1959 general election. In a rare radio broadcast on 8 May 1959, Mrs. Lee spoke up against what she called the myth that women are the social, political and economic inferiors of men. And she said, quote, We believe women can make a valuable contribution to our political life. The PAP has done more than just talk. We are fielding five women candidates in the elections, among them the only Malay woman candidate, unquote. When Mr. Lee got more involved in politics and became Singapore's Prime Minister in 1959, it was Mrs. Lee and his younger brother Lee Kim Yu who built up and expanded Lee and Lee, the law firm all three had set up in 1955. In her own way, Mrs. Lee was Mr. Lee's personal compass. She focused on the home front, allowing him to focus on politics as he worked to secure the future of a newly independent Singapore. Mr. Lee once said his great advantage was that he had a wife who could be a sole breadwinner and also bring up the children. That was his, quote, insurance policy, which allowed him to play the role he did in Singapore's history. And Mrs. Lee took great care to ensure she was always an asset and never a liability to her husband. 
For example, when writing letters to government agencies on behalf of her clients, she would leave her name out. She doesn't want the government servants to see that this is a letter from her. She doesn't want to even give the civil servants a chance to be favor play favoritism. So if she takes favors, get business from people and do them favors, it will affect me. So she was very careful. Because even without doing bad things, people say bad things about you. <laughs> So, we have to be careful. She was also supportive in other ways. Away from the media glare, whenever Mr Lee was at the political forefront in his Tanjung Paga constituency, hers was an assuring presence in the background. Li Furen, he is very concerned about some of the 尤其在尤其那些参加在竞选的时候参加协助帮忙竞选活动的The late Mr Lim Kim's son once said a tribute to Mr Lee Kuan Yew would be incomplete without referring to Mrs Lee. Few would disagree with him. A loving and devoted wife and mother, she has stood by him through thick and thin. There is no doubt she must have been of great help and comfort to him in his stressful but successful political career. If I may say so, Mrs. Lee has been working in tandem with senior minister for the good of Singapore. Indeed, her inputs behind the scene were little known. During the separation talks with Malaysian Prime Minister Tunku Abdul Rahman, Mr Lee knew that water would one day become a pressure point on Singapore. So he wanted the water agreement to be part of the separation agreement to provide Singapore with water up till 2011 and 2061. That water agreement was put into the separation agreement because I got her to do it. Mr Barker was not a conveyancer. So he did the separation agreement, he went down to the library, dug up the precedents, found one in the West Indies where they separated in a federation. But when I asked him to put in the water agreement, he said, no, better get... He was a partner with the two of us, with my brother, so he knew that my wife could do it better than him. So my wife did that part of the water agreement was sent back to take charge of his end. Mr. Lee also admitted candidly that his wife had helped clean up his speeches. She read his drafts, gave her views, improved on his presentation and helped put the points across clearly. And she was his, quote, powerful critic and helper when he wrote his memoirs, often staying up late into the night with him to work on it. Mrs. Lee had a deep interest in gardens and greenery. And this showed on her visits to parks and when Singapore was developing as a garden city. Nature was seen as having an important role in lifting the spirits. Mrs. Lee had a strength of character which saw her through some very difficult moments in her life. As mother and grandmother, Mrs. Lee rallied the family around when Lee Sin Long's first wife, Ming Yang, died of a heart attack in 1982. And it was Mrs. Lee, the Nai Nai, or grandmother, who helped raise their children, Su Ti and Yi Peng, in those early years as he recovered from one of the darkest moments in his life. 
In October 2003, Mrs. Lee suffered a stroke while on a visit to London. Her doctors took the calculated risk of flying her back on a Singapore Airlines flight. Fortunately, she made a good recovery. She kept up an active lifestyle with exercises and walks playing a key part and was again seen in public at her husband's side at community events and on travels overseas. <laughs> I ride in front. <laughs> 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 you, you can hold the... Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. Very good. <laughs> 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 And she was there when her son, Lee Sen Lung, was sworn in as Singapore's third Prime Minister. You either have the Western view, you marry the woman you love, or the Eastern view, you love the woman you marry. <laughs> well, I tried to match both. <laughs> and I think it wasn't a bad choice. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Lee never lost the bond they found since they first fell in love. This was evident when they shared a nostalgic moment in April 2005 during a visit to Rumah Temasek, an historic building in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. They had stayed here on and off in the 1960s when they visited the Malaysian capital. That's me with somebody I can't remember. Probably one of the jogging girls. <laughs> Later, halfway through an interview, Mrs. Lee interrupted the recording, a simple act which said more than a thousand words. What is that? That's paper. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. It needs a... Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> my, my director. <laughs> A great support to her husband in his public duties, especially during Singapore's early tumultuous years, she was just as important in her children's lives. Mr. Lee once said, in the family, she made most of the decisions. But Mrs. Lee shied away from a high profile. Even when she was a guest of honour at a fundraising dinner hosted by the International Women's Forum Singapore Chapter in 2007, she made it clear the limelight was not for her. It would be an interesting evening. It was understood that he was not making a speech. And I never was expected to make a speech. So I'll just say... Good night to everybody. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed myself and I hope you have too. Good night and thank you. <laughs> <laughs>